Well, I think it's it's been fabulous. Again, we, we moved into it, you know, fairly quickly again last year. Uh, and, and again, that first year was kind of a trial period, I think, for everybody to build trust and, and build the partnership. Uh, but when you look at the, just the different types of resources that are available to us that probably most other USL Pro teams don't maybe have, whether that's a scouting network, whether that's uh, international connections to try and make things, or even just an open door policy. Uh, that's probably been the best thing with them. There, there's not been anything uh, that we've asked for from an assistance perspective uh, or from a questions perspective. Uh, we're able to just pick up the phone, call, go up there anytime we want to, and the doors are wide open. Last season, Sporting was obviously finishing out their uh, last season of their agreement with Orlando City coming into 2015. Energy FC is the sole affiliate for Sporting KC. How much more importance does that bring onto the organization? You know, again, I think it, uh, it makes it less complicated, that's for sure. Uh, you, you know, because we try and keep good working relationships even with those teams inside the league. So, you know, you didn't want to necessarily just be in a pecking order where you're saying, well, we should get first pick or we should go back and forth on picks and those types of things. And, uh, you know, we feel like the relationship still worked well last year uh, for us and, and there weren't any downsides necessarily to them being in. Uh, but still there aren't divided resources at this point and there's just not two, two people to consider when you make the decisions. When you look at some of the sporting affiliated players that were here last season, you have a Christian Duke, John Kempen, Mikey Lopez, like you mentioned. How important was it to have some of those uh, standout guys to be able to come in here and fill vital roles from the very start, especially in the, in the team's first season? Oh, it was huge. Um, and again, that's, you know, you always get kind of questioned as a guy gets pulled out and somebody says, so is that a good thing or a bad thing when they're here uh, in terms of the continuity of the team and, that, and whatnot. But uh, as we take kind of a broader approach to it, we kind of take the big step back and say, well, would we have players of that quality? Uh, and when you start to talk about guys that are getting drafted out first, second, third in the super draft, when you're talking about young guys, I mean, when you're talking about a guy who goes to the Chipotle uh, homegrown in the all-star game and, and is named man of the match, uh, when you're talking about a guy who goes back up and the day he leaves you, he goes and marks Thierry Henry out of the game, uh, you know, it's, it's obvious that they, you're not getting past uh, trash down. It's not just rehabbing players. We never really had that experience. And again, the relationship with them is good enough as well that we're able to have longer term conversations about development. Another byproduct of the, the sporting agreement is their recent, their recent affiliation with uh, Fluminense FC down in Brazil. How important is that? Uh, it's obviously important for them, but how does that affect uh, Oklahoma City here? You know, and again, it's funny. I always talk about partnerships uh, rather than sponsorships or friendships and different things like that. And so for me, a partnership is somebody where somebody can benefit in both directions. And it was funny as they started working on some of those deals, uh, having a club like the Energy in place was, was huge to them being able to do deals like that. Uh, because again, there's different levels of players in those countries. And so as they look at it, yeah, they had a guy up last year. Uh, Igor was up and played in with the first team and got significant minutes. But you're not going to have five or six guys come out of that organization and be up landing with Sporting Kansas City. Uh, but there's a whole slew of guys there who are in kind of that next niche. And they're really, Fluminense wants them to develop. Sporting hopes that they develop inside of their system. Uh, and inside that particular country, there's kind of a, a missing component for those levels of players. They might not quite be ready for the Fluminense first team or for one of the Brazilian first teams yet, uh, but there's not really a league there like USL Pro to then turn and develop those players.